Has the reaction translated in concrete terms to fewer records sold? Did the last record that you did, the most recent one, which was last May, yeah. do less well than you had anticipated? Do less well. I well, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to put a positive. It's half <laughs> No, full, that's great. As yeah. to half empty. Um, I'll tell you this. My last record, the Metropolitan Hotel, at this time uh, in its release, mm -hmm. um, had sold 60,000. Uh, it had gone, it went on to sell 100,000 units. Right. This record has yet to break the 20,000 mark. And, wh and what, do you think that, what do you think that is? Do you think that's people saying, uh, this is more than I want to know about this woman, I'm not now going to be a fan of this woman's music or of her performances, and so I'm just going to cut her off? It's a political statement? I don't know that people are, that it's political for them. I think it's emotional for them, and it's religiously based. Mm -hmm. I don't think that they... Um, you know, country fans are great. Country fans want to believe in the artists that they support, mm. but when they feel betrayed, and to some degree they felt betrayed by me, mm -hmm. they thought that I stood for a certain uh, set of ideals, which I do, but they thought that once I came out, it somehow discounted right. those other things. Right. And I've received... It devalued those things. It yeah. yeah, and they, you know, I am a Christian. Um, and now I'm being told by, in, in letters from fans, you are not, and you will burn in hell, and I will never buy another record. Mm -hmm. um, so to some degree, I would have to, I can't, I can't speak for people who stopped buying my records, right. but if I were a betting woman, I'd say that's the, right. the, You're now recording for smaller independent yeah. labels as yeah. opposed to big labels. Yeah. Uh, what did the label people say? I mean, surely they were given a heads up about this. Absolutely. What, what did they say when you said, I want to, I'm going to do this? Well, I made a record with Rodney Crowell. Right. You ever hear him? Yeah. yeah. We like Rodney Crowell. Um, I made my record with Rodney, and during the process, in the process of making that record, I came out to Rodney. Um, and then we finished the record with that understanding, and, mm -hmm. and the record really coalesced at that point, emotionally and creatively. And, um, and then we added a song on it called Like Me, which was you know, clearly me with another woman in the song. And, and I think it was at the heart of everything that record's about. And I told Rodney a couple months after we started the record, I'm gay, and finished the record uh, early 2008. I didn't have a label at the time. I wanted to finish my record and make the best record I could and then see who was excited about it and, and with the understanding that nobody might be excited about it. Yeah. I might not find a home you were, for it. You were prepared I was, for that. I was ready. Yeah. Um, and so when I finished it, Steve Buckingham, who was uh, at that time at Vanguard Records, um, and I had confided in him that I was going to come out, he got my record and he sent it to Kevin Welk, the owner of Vanguard Records. Vanguard contacted me and said, we love your record, we want to put it out. And I realized, well, I can't let these people do that without telling them what I'm about to do. Right. I got on a plane, went to San Diego, sat down with them um, in a closed-door meeting and said, I'm glad you like my record, but here's what I'm, this is my plan. I'm going to come out. I'm writing a book. I didn't have a home for my book either. Right. I wrote it on blind faith and yeah. ultimately Random House bought the book. Um, and when I told Kevin Welk that I was going to do that, he looked around at his team, he looked at me, and he said, I love it. I'm 